Backyard Birds of Northeast Ohio. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be about all the birds that you will see in your backyard. Our first bird is one of the most beautiful birds you can see right now in springtime, the American Goldfinch. Uh, the male is the brightest, a very bright, bright, vibrant yellow in the summer and he turns olive color during the winter. And the female, the one uh, in the picture towards the back, they are more of a dull yellow brown shade, which brightens only a little bit during the summer. They are residents of weedy fields, fence rows, and seed bearing trees. You'll also see them at finch feeders. They love to eat niger, which is thistle seed. Uh, they're very good nest builders. There are such good nest builders that their nests can even hold water. And they can also fly over five miles a day between feeders. Right now, during April, they're all over the place. So I'm sure you will see American goldfinches. The American robin is found throughout Ohio the whole year. They are usually the first bird you hear in the morning. Uh, they like to nest on your porch or your windowsill, and they love to run on the ground. They're rarely seen on a feeder. They're mainly on the ground picking for worms. Uh, they prefer mowed lawns, suburban and urban and rural areas. They will use open woodland areas with, sp with sparse understory or ground cover. They're very social and they will roost communally with other robins and occasionally with starlings and blackbirds. They like to eat beetle grubs, earthworms, caterpillars, fruits, and berries. Our next bird is a Baltimore, Baltimore Oriole. These birds are strikingly beautiful with their jet black heads and backs brilliant orange breasts and rumps and white wing patches. This is the male. The females are a subdued yellow and brown color. They like to be in open woods with large shade trees. They typically feed on caterpillars and other insects and they like fruits and nectar, jelly and oranges. So you can leave out oranges or jelly to attract the Baltimore Oriole. Uh, they're most often seen on top of trees when they're not searching around the, the bird feeders. They are actually named after their bold orange and black colors, which were the colors of the crest of England's Lord Baltimore family. So that's how they got their name. The black cap chickadee is, is well-known for its ability to lower its body temperature during cold winter nights, and it has very good memory, so it can store food somewhere and remember where they hid it for over a month. They can remember where they hid it. Uh, they mainly eat seeds, but sometimes some insects. They have a highly complex vocalization and they're one of the easiest birds to attract to a feeder. The blue jay is part of the crow family, which is a group of larger aggressive birds and the blue jay is a pretty aggressive bird. The blue jay is a common winter resident, but they can be highly migratory and you may get to see more in the spring. At one time, their habitat was primarily oak woods, but they're now common in parks and suburban areas. Sometimes you'll see them chasing smaller birds away from the feeders. They like to eat nuts, seeds, insects, mice, and frogs, and they will also rob other nests for small songbirds and bird eggs. They like bird baths 
and they can also make a pretty good impression of a red-shouldered hawk, their sound. Next you will have one, in my opinion, one of the coolest birds around, a brown creeper. These are elusive birds. You have to look closely to find them. They blend into the bark of the tree. They are permanent residents throughout their range. They, so they stay here all season long. They forage on tree trunks and branches and they usually go spiral upwards from the bottom of a tree trunk and then fly down to the bottom of another tree. They slowly creep with their body flat against the bark, probing with their beak for insects. They, you'll rarely see them feeding on the ground. The brown-headed cowbird is black with a brown head, and the females are gray with a lighter throat color. So this picture here is a male. Um, right now, it's the middle of April, or the end of April, and I've seen a lot of brown-headed cowbirds right now on the side of the road and in people's yards. Um, the species is much re reviled it's parasitic and it can lay up to 40 eggs per season in other birds' nests. And the baby cowbirds will normally outcompete the host species young, and so the cowbirds have detrimental impacts on other songbirds. They inhabit all types of situations, usually avoiding dense woodlands. They have a high-pitched gurgling call and they are named a cowbird because before the European settlement in the history of North America, they would follow the bison herds across the prairies. But now they're most commonly seen at suburban bird feeders. The next bird you'll commonly see is a Carolina wren. The Carolina wren was a very common resident before 1977, but during the extreme cold and snow of the few winters that followed 1977, they were almost wiped out in Ohio. So now they are a rare permanent resident. Naturalists do believe that the species will recover, but it will take many years before they are plentiful again. If you do look close, you may see a Carolina wren this one in the picture is feeding on suet. They are shy. They defend their territory with constant singing. If you want to attract Carolina wrens, they do like brush piles and shrubbery. They like to eat insects and spiders. The common grackle is known for its bright yellow eyes, and it's the largest of the blackbirds in Ohio. They're also large and lanky and iridescent. They dominate smaller birds at feeders, and they're very common in woodlands, parks, farm fields, and cities. They like to feed on insects, seeds, grains, and eggs. The downy woodpecker is one of the most common woodpeckers you'll see in Northeast Ohio. The male has a patch of red on his back of his head and the female has no red. They are the smallest of North America's woodpeckers. They like to forage on trees, picking the bark surface in summer and digging deeper in the winter. They like to eat insects, seeds, and berries. The Eastern Bluebird were once very common in Ohio when the countryside had lots of small fields and hay, oats, and pastures. And as farming changed away from pastures and orchards, the bluebird habitat declined in Ohio. Also, the European starling, which you will see in a minute here, took a lot of the bluebirds 
I guess, nesting sites away. The bluebirds do not build their own nests. They use other nests that have already been built, like a, a bluebird house or a box. They're often found near old field borders, orchards, golf courses, and parks. And they typically eat insects during the summer and fruits and seeds in the winter. And they also like mealworm feeders. So if you want to attract a bluebird, mealworm feeders would be good. This bird is a European starling. They have a glossy black plumage with a metallic sheen and it's speckled with white at some times of the year. Its gift for mimicry has been noted in literature, including William Shakespeare. In fact, all of the European starlings you see today in North America descended from a hundred birds that were set loose in New York City in the 1890s by Shakespeare enthusiasts. So they set loose a hundred European starlings that they brought over from Europe. And all of the European starlings we see today are descendants of those 100 birds. They're very common in lawns, city parks, and fields. They are beneficial to agriculture by controlling pests, but they can also be pests themselves when they feed on fruit and sprouting crops. They're also noisy and messy in large urban roosts. They like to eat spiders, moths, dragonflies, beetles, bees, wasps, and ants. The gray catbird likes to eat fruits and berries, mealworms, earthworms, beetles, and bugs. They are plain gray almost all over. The top of the head is a little darker. They got their name because of their cat-like call. Their mimics can last up to 10 minutes. They like woodland edges, overgrown farmland, and abandoned orchards. But you can also see them at your feeder as well. They're widespread and plentiful, but they are reclusive, which makes them seem less common than they are. The house finch, this is a house finch, this is a male house finch, who have red necks and shoulders and heads. It can sometimes extend down to the belly and between the wings. Their redness varies in intensity with the seasons and, it's, and they get their redness from the berries and fruits in their diet. They were introduced, they were originally a, a resident of Mexico and they were introduced to Eastern North America in the 1940s when they were sold illegally in New York City as a Hollywood finch. To avoid prosecution under a, law, a bird migratory bird law, vendors and owners release the birds. They have since become naturalized to the Eastern United States. They like to eat grains, seeds, and berries, and small insects. Frequent visitors to bird feeders throughout the year, especially if they are stocked with sunflower or niger seeds. The morning dove is one of the most common birds you'll see. They begin their nesting activities during the first warm days of spring. Most of their nests are in trees and shrubs, and they'll also use buildings and other structures to support their nests.
They regularly reside near rural or suburban residences and shade trees while finding a plentiful source of food on your lawn or at bird feeders. They eat predominantly eat seeds. They're also numerous in rural farmlands and wood lots. And the only habitat where they aren't found would be in the interiors of mature woods. The bird, the mourning part of the mourning dove is named for its song, which is a low mournful coo, coo, coo. And you'll often, often see them on the ground storing seeds inside their crop, which is an enlargement in their esophagus that they can fill with seeds. And once they fill the crop, they'll fly somewhere safe to eat. This is a male northern cardinal. The females are usually a lighter grayish brown red with red only on their wings and crest. The male is bright red with a black face. Cardinals prefer a mixed habitat of woodlands, brush, and forest edges. They eat seeds, and they have a thick cone-shaped beak, which is well adapted to handling. They do not migrate. They stay, stay here all year long. During courtship, the male will feed the female beak to beak. And you can see that a lot around your feeders. The male will go to the feeder get some food and bring it back over to a tree or a fence where the female's waiting and feed her. And cardinals got their name by referring to the Roman Catholic Church cardinals who wear distinctive red robes and caps. And the northern cardinal is the state bird of Ohio as well. This is a northern flicker the female looks about the same, except they don't have a black mustache. They are a medium-sized bird of the woodpecker family. They have a red band on, on the back of their head. Like most woodpeckers, they drum on objects as a form of communication and territory defense. They frequently feed on the ground, probing with their beak and sometimes catching insects in flight. Uh, they will also eat fruits, berries, seeds, and nuts. And 45% of their diet is usually made up of ants. They can be observed in open habitats near trees, woodlands, edges, yards, and parks. Go back here. They, they can also forage on the sides of human homes or even cars. They are less likely a feeder visitor, but they may be attracted to feeders in areas exp experiencing harsh condition, winter conditions. So you mainly will see them up, up in trees or up on buildings. They will also excavate oval holes and tree trunks that are several feet long. The red-bellied woodpecker is another common woodpecker that you may see and you will, could see this at your feeder. It has a red crown that extends down the nape of the neck. And a very bit, they're called red bellied. They have a very light red on their belly, but the main red that you will notice is on their head. The robin sized bird has a pale buffy gray breast and black and white striped wings as well. The female is only red on the nape of her neck and not on the back of her head. They're found in forests, woodlots, and parks, and they are an uncommon permanent resident. This woodpecker is beneficial because of the tremendous number of insects and larvae it consumes. It also eats nuts and berries. The last woodpecker we'll talk about is the red-headed woodpecker. This one has a completely red head. 
they like to eat insects, seeds, fruits and berries, and occasionally small rodents and eggs of other birds. About two thirds of their diet is made up of plants. They could nest in a cavity in a dead tree, a utility pole. They also have, besides the red head, they have a white breast, black tail and wings. This is our only woodpecker in which the sexes are similar, similarly marked, so the male and female pretty much look the same. You'll find them in open wooded areas with oaks and hickories, and they're also found along country roads where utility poles are a good substitute for trees. A red-winged blackbird, one of the first signs of spring when you see a red-winged blackbird. This species inhabitat, inhabits all types of open habitats, roadsides, and marshes. They are one of the most abundant birds and obvious species along our roadsides. They like to eat seeds and insects, and they are also one of the most abundant living land birds in North America. And you'll notice them by their black body and their orange and yellow and reddish wings. The rose-breasted grosbeak is also a sure, sure sign of spring. They will, they're found mainly in shrubs and trees looking for insects, seeds, and berries. They usually keep to the treetops and can only rarely be seen on the ground. They will eat at your feeder as well though. A gross beak refers to the thick, strong beak used to crush seeds. As you can see in the picture, they have a very thick beak. The male has a gray crown with brown on the sides of his head. The females are more of a dull, light brown color with a sort of yellowish white stripe near their eye. The tufted titmouse is a common permanent resident of this area. They're sometimes called the sugar bird because they start to sing in the winter when the sap in the maple trees begins to run. Habitats are similar to the chickadee, but the titmouse is not as confiding. They can be seen in forests, woodlots, parks, and neighborhoods and they like to eat insects, nuts, seeds, and fruits. They are slate gray with a white chest and belly and they have a really cute little pointed crest on the top of their head. They're notorious for pulling hair from sleeping dogs, cats, and squirrels to line their nest. And the last bird we had to talk about that you'll see at your feeder in spring would be a white-breasted nuthatch. This is a very small songbird of the nuthatch family, and they're very common across North America. They're stocky with a large head and a short tail, and they have a very powerful bill. They have a black cap, a white face and chest, and blue-gray upper parts. Their preferred habitat is old growth open forests, orchards, parks, and suburban gardens and cemeteries. They're agile climbers and they have a, have a habit of wedging a seed inside a crevice and hacking it open. Hence their name a nuthatch. Thank you for listening. I hope you are able to identify some of the birds you see at your feeder from this video and enjoy the birding.